welcome to the Archery Outdoorsman Podcast, where you'll find a whole host of outdoor-related topics like hunting, fishing, hiking, to motivational topics and workouts. If you like what you hear, hit that subscribe button. Leave a five-star review. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. All you got to do is type in Archery Outdoorsman. If you want to help out, you can also find us on Patreon. Come and visit us at our website at www.archeryoutdoorsman.com. Enjoy the show. Welcome back. Got a very special episode. I've got a few guys here that close to my heart, military. Two of them were supposed to go hunting. I don't remember. Was Stoker, were you supposed to go with us? No, I had some plans. Oh, that's right. You were busy getting beat up. Uh, so... Damn. <laughs> Starting that early. Starting that early. Start already. I know we were going to do that already. Oh, come on, man. It's all fair game. <laughs> no, uh, so two of these guys were supposed to go um, on this Barbary sheep hunt, and some military-related issues came up for the most part. And, yeah. Um. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And, but mainly I wanted to talk about the opportunities that you have in the outdoors for, uh, for military and, and being in the military and stuff like that. What sort of opportunities you have. Um, and, you know, as far as hunting, fishing, all that kind of stuff, or, or just going out like different licenses and so on and so forth that the military kind of affords you and the disadvantages like we just experienced so you want to introduce yourself start with midget mike me yeah you'd be midget mike yeah (laughs) all right my name is mike ts yeah uh, did you forget no i don't know oh he definitely he definitely (laughs) forgot yeah i didn't have my morning crayons uh yeah, so I'm Mike. Uh, me and my son are uh, the sportsman's duo. Uh, big outdoor enthusiasts, big hunters. Um, I try and hunt every every state that I can. Uh, and if if you don't know who TSD Outdoors is, uh, it's the sportsman's duo. But if you look at his Instagram handle, it's TSD Outdoors. Um, should check it out. It talks a lot about conservation and stuff like that and getting your kids involved. And you see a lot of different pictures with him getting his kids involved in the outdoors. Great, great content. Yeah. All right. Name is Mark. Um, Instagram name, Berserker Outdoors. Um, unlike Aaron and Mike, I don't do, didn't really do a lot of hunting until I met you here so uh absolutely love it though especially after duck season good season learned i can't shoot a shotgun so comes with practice yeah (laughs) thanks for reminding me me um yeah and just i love doing a lot of things outdoors i don't even know what camera to look at Uh, it just doesn't matter all right i like doing a lot of things outdoors Uh, anything from like snowboarding hiking um hunting now so that's it that's all you bud my name is garrett uh i came from eastern shore maryland always big into hunting anything outdoors and after i got here i met mike and he kind of helped me out on my way to do a little bit of duck hunting and stuff like that and get out and experience this place a little bit better so i got a question what's that I assumed that you were from the South because you have a Southern accent no. <laughs> and you're, you thing. just said you're from Maryland. Yeah. Like <laughs> Where did that order. accent come from? Not sure. <laughs> just kind of picked Not it up sure. in a bar a one day? People, a lot of people in the area that I am have that accent. So. Really? Yeah. Wow. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Yep. Interesting. I love it so much. I got a tattoo on my chest. <laughs> You love Maryland? Mm-hmm. You go you go crabbing at all? Blue crab? Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've always wanted to do that. I've never actually uh, had a chance to to go and do it. 
but it's fun. Oh yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a blast. Running a trot line. That's my favorite. Oh man. So how do you how do you how do you do it? Like I I've, I've never really seen the process, you know, I you know, I watch the deadliest catch or whatever and you know, they just kind of throw these pots off and uh, is that like how it works? You guys go uh, in the intercoastal places and do it or how does that there's, work? There's a lot of different ways people do it. You can go chicken necking. They just throw the regular line out from a pier and pull it in uh Pull them in real slow, and then you can dip them up with the net when you see them in the water. Uh, people set out traps in the boat. It's just a buoy on a line, and then it's got the trap with the four folding doors. Some of them are pointed triangle. They have crab pot, which you let them soak, sit out in the water for a while. They come in through the bottom, and you just get as many as you can, dump them all out, and you start calling them which is measuring to see if they're the right size and stuff like that. And uh, Oh, so that's like that gauge that they have like yeah. on the show or whatever. It's like it's got to be a minimum of however big. Or... Yeah, I think it's five, and then later on in the air it goes five and a quarter. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I haven't done it in a little while. And my favorite is uh, trot lining. It's just an uh, anchor goes up to a buoy, down to another, another anchor, and you have a line. And every about two arm lengths, you have a you have a chicken neck. You can have bull lips, you know, clamshells, anything like that. Bull lips is that like code for something, or like bull literally lips. like bull lips, cow yeah. lips? I mean, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, that's what I always understood. Um, you just take it and and the same system. So anchor, buoy, anchor, and your trot line. Anchor, buoy, anchor, and you just run the line. And it goes up to the boat on a roller, and you just you go and you dip them up, dip them up from in the box, and call them when you're done. Have you ever stole anybody else's trap uh, crab pots or anything like that? No, I'm not. That would be epic. <laughs> I mean, I found some, one. Some some guy go out there and all of a sudden, damn, I'm not catching anything. <laughs> <It's just gone. laughs> Everybody's robbing yeah. his shit. No. Um, oh, you mean taking them out of somebody's pot? Yeah. So this ever happened to you, you know <laughs> yeah. who it was. Yeah. Oh, we used to catch them off the dock. Yeah, that's pretty good. We go to the dock in the evening, and you just take a like fishing pole with a squid, like frozen squid, mm -hmm. and you just tie it to the line to put the hook on it, drop it down to the bottom, and then you see your pole start to bob, you just reel it up really slow, and they'll, they'll hold on all the way up. Mm -hmm. They'll clamp on that line, and then as soon as you get them out of the water, they'll let go and fall in the water. And so you, you got a buddy with a net, as soon as it breaks the water, you just stick the net under them, and they fall in the net, and you throw them in the cooler. Mm -hmm. We usually just measure them like this, from <laughs> point to point. If they were that big, they were good. So, and you did that in Erie? No, 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 no. We're in Chesapeake Bay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so my uncle lives in Maryland, so we used to go every summer. We'd go down and visit him, and we'd go to the Chesapeake, go catch crabs, and all kinds of saltwater fishing. He had a boat. We'd go out there and fish on the in the channel and stuff. It was a lot of fun. Heck yeah. So what got you guys started in the outdoors? Obviously you said him, but I kind of refuse to believe that you so, didn't do anything in the outdoors so, being stationed in Alaska. <laughs> so being stationed in Alaska was like, I chose to get stationed there after I was stationed in Louisiana. They let you? Yeah. That's some fucking bullshit. Well, you guys don't get that in the Chair Force? Air Force, excuse me. Yeah, no. Uh, it seems like everywhere that you want to go, mm -hmm. they don't send you. It's like, I, I don't I don't know what it is. It's like, military's like, oh, yeah, you want it? Oh, that sucks, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to go to Fort Campbell for three years. Okay, Fort Bliss. Like, okay. Yeah. All right. But no, like being stationed up in Alaska, it was a perfect opportunity for me because I love the outdoors. So I was snowboarding every day. I was out hiking, um, cross country skiing, even though I'm not a big skier. Um, but definitely, like, I love the wilderness and 
just everything about it. It was just being stationed in Alaska. I didn't know anything about hunting. I didn't know the licenses, the permits, the territories you were allowed to hunt in. It just seemed like a lot. Or fishing. Yeah, or fishing. Fishing mecca of, I would probably say, the world. Yeah, absolutely. And you never went fishing in Alaska. No, but I, I plan on making my way back around to Alaska. But the one thing that got me was, um, obviously, hearing from other hunters and fishers that they, in a, especially in Alaska, you see a lot more game wardens and troopers than you do wildlife, you know. And you'd say like, oh yeah, it's that's got to be like a bit of a lion. Mm-hmm. It might be, but. That just shows, like, you know, how true they are to hunting. You know, they yeah. want to preserve the game for everyone. So, all that and, like, plus they were saying, like, if you get caught doing the wrong thing, you know, it's $10,000 fine or however much. Mm-hmm. So, that was kind of, like, pushed me away. Well, actually, that, that big fine is pretty much anywhere. Like, yeah depending on where you go like if i obviously in in texas and i should preface this by saying that we are on fort bliss in el paso texas um but in texas you know there's a bunch of like non-native species here just because of the way they do things and that's for a completely different podcast but um the Let's say, well, let's not use Texas as an example. Let's say you go to my home state of Montana. If I shoot a bighorn sheep in Montana without a tag, Mm -hmm. um, I'm fucked. Like, one, I wouldn't do that anyway. But two, like, if you get caught, it's a ginormous fine. You lose all of it. You're probably going to lose your hunting license for... X number of years if you don't lose it indefinitely um, you'll lose your hunting license and they've got reciprocity across mm-hmm. all the different states right so you won't be able to buy a hunting license in any of those states um, and then like I said a huge fine possibly jail time uh, if you got your truck there they're gonna take your truck they're gonna take your weapon they're gonna take your gear everything so they're super serious about that kind of stuff but Um, as long as you're being, uh, conscious. Oh yeah. And, and you're doing everything that you're supposed to be doing. It's not a big deal. Right. I mean, it's not that hard to do things the right way. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's one thing I I would definitely want to say for anybody that's not, uh, that's letting those kinds of things hold them back. Right. Don't let that hold you back. Find somebody that, you know, is doing the right things. Uh, we found out through this trip, Mike and I, <laughs> that the game wardens don't always know everything. But at least if you talk to your DNR or Fish and Wildlife um, agents and stuff like that, they'll be able to at least point you in the right direction of where to find uh, the regulations and yeah. stuff. My best bet or advice would be research the crap out of where you're going and what you're hunting. Oh yeah. Because I thought for the past several months, I researched these animals, I've researched the areas, I've talked to game wardens, I've looked at the rules, and everything I thought was pointing me in the right direction, and then come to find out once we're out there, like here in Texas, public land, is not public land. It's well, privatized. Well, yeah. So we had to shift a little bit a little our bit hunting different. from a Texas hunt to New Mexico. So we had no knowledge of the area. We called game wardens, and they were like, "Yeah, go to this side of the state. There's tons of animals out there." Right. And which which we they were they were right. There were tons of animals there, and we just apparently didn't go far enough yeah. that direction but one thing I, I do want to say real quick public land is still public land in texas but you've got and again this is going to be for a completely different podcast too but since we already hit on it a little bit 
So you've got state lands, which is owned by the state, and then you've got public lands, which is federal public lands. Mm -hmm. um, and the state can dictate whatever they want on those state lands. And in the state of Texas, they privatize it to where they can, they privatize the state lands to where you can lease out the state property and which really sucks because when they lease out that property, mm -hmm. you can't go on it. So basically so that the state doesn't have to maintain that property, uh, you know, you're basically paying a fee to whatever Joe Blow that leased this place and you may or may not even get to hunt there. So when I found out who was actually leasing that place, he goes, oh yeah, I'll, I'll let you on there for two grand for two days, for two days. Per person. Yeah, per person. I was like, really? The, the game warden and the state land board office uh, official told me that he just wanted to get rid of the odd ad, uh, barber sheep, on his property. Like, just wanted to get rid of them. He thought they were a nuisance. But somebody comes and they offer to at least help. And, you know, you say, you're going to, like, rake me over the coals and, mm -hmm. and put the pipe to me. I mean, I was, I was a little bit upset about that. Plus, I was a little bit upset. Not, not that this should be used as an excuse, but... I did tell him, hey, look, you know, I wanted to get these military guys out there kind of as a way to say thank you for just everything. There's a lot of sacrifice involved, whether you've gone to war or not, just putting your life on hold in a, in a lot of ways, um, doing what you do, you know, just, just to say thank you. And this guy was like, yeah, I give two fucks. Yeah. Which is fine. I mean, it's his right to do so, but just can't seem kind of shitty that, you know, he wanted to get rid of these animals, which is a non-native species brought here in World War II. And then all of a sudden he sees an opportunity to maybe make a coin and he goes, yeah, how's that dick taste? Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but so... In Alaska, at least you got the snowboard. You got to enjoy the outdoors a oh, little absolutely. bit. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I got to do a lot of fun activities. And the good thing about being in the military, especially in places like, you know, whether you're in Fort Wainwright, um, Fort Richardson, anywhere in Alaska, Carson. Colorado, yeah, Fort Carson, um, even Fort Drum, where me and Mike are headed to, you know, you have a lot of, uh-oh, what? So Just you and Mike? Huh? Stoker's oh, just, oh like, that's oh. right. And Stoker. No, huh? We're no, come good. here. Stop being such a stickler. Anyways, <laughs> no, but like there are a lot of good uh, opportunities to go out hunting or fishing for real cheap. You know, you got the boss program, which, you know, you pay like 35 bucks. I know when I was up in Alaska, they did 35 bucks. You go out for on a Friday, you know, and they take you out salmon fishing. Oh, you know, really? They provide all the gear. They had snowboard trips, hiking trips. Um, just there's a lot of opportunities. And then you go to MWR and, you know, you can rent out a bunch of gear. You know, I know we uh, ran out kayaks from the MWR, took them out on the river because we had a river that flowed right through base. And see, I didn't know about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Even when I was in, like, I. I put my whole hunting and fishing life completely on hold when I was in the military, just mainly because I didn't know that there were opportunities out there. And that, yeah. that was also why I wanted to do this podcast because, fuck, I didn't know about the boss program. I didn't, yeah. you know. Well, as if the boss reps do their jobs uh, yeah. most of the time. So that's, but, that's pretty fucking cool, though. Yeah. And yeah. There's a lot of opportunity. Like at first, when I found out I was coming here, I was a little discouraged because I heard a lot of 
negative things about the area. Yeah, and same. Like, oh man, I'm going <laughs> to the desert. It's gonna be nothing. And then I did a little research, and I'm like, oh man, I got I can have mule deer, and there's you know Barbary sheep, and all these exotics, and and I was I was kind of excited, thinking oh, I'm gonna hunt. You know, and in Texas, if you're military, you get free hunting license, which is fantastic, and you get all your tags. Yeah. Your hunting and fishing is free. Yep. And then... Yeah, you guys fucking killed the migratory birds. This oh, year. Yeah. yeah. So, well, I'm, I'm getting to that. So, <laughs> we get Yeah, here. don't interrupt it, man. <laughs> yeah. Damn it, man. <laughs> so, you know, I get here, I'm all excited to do all these hunts, and I start researching, and then I find out out here there's, there's real no... Like public lands, like well, I'm from Pennsylvania, and we have wildlife management units. And when you buy your tag, when you buy your license, that's your access permit to those lands, and they're for the public, for hunting, and and then in the off hunting season, it's for recreation. And and here in Texas, it's not that way. You have to purchase the public land access permit, which is an additional like $48 or something, yeah. Yeah. which we bought it um, mm -hmm. and thinking, okay, cool, you know, and then we do some more research and we finally get the map and there's no public land around here. So the closest place was, what, an hour, 15? Yeah. And we went, to, and there was a dove field only. And we went dove hunting the opening day of dove and, and we killed it. We Between the six of us, we had like, everybody got their limit. We had a hundred some doves. It was fantastic. It was it was a blast by noon. Like we crushed doves. We went back the second day, and I think we wiped out the whole population because we killed like four the second day. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, I ain't coming back like that. And then so like we crushed the doves, and and then on Fort Bliss, they have hunting opportunity. You can go to the Rod mm -hmm. Gun Club, and uh, it's a draw. All big game on the uh, post is a draw. Small game, uh, migratory birds, stuff like that. Is, is fair game, you can go out there and hunt. Uh, as long as you have your access permit and your weapons are registered. And I've taken advantage of that, and I've gone out there and just crushed rabbits with another buddy of mine. Uh, I think one day we killed like 15 rabbits. So you know? so how do you enter in those draws? And it might be different in different bases if there's a draw. Like I know Fort Bragg had a hunting opportunities, and I'd... I found this out afterwards, but I don't know if it was a, a draw or not. And like other bases, you know, have those hunting opportunities. How do you actually take advantage of those so, draw systems and who do you talk to? So here, uh, I mean, it, obviously every base is different. Like I know I've already done my research for Fort Drum and I know those hunts aren't draw hunts. Uh, at Fort Drum, you have your hunting license. You know, you get your state hunting license, you purchase your tag, and then you go on post to, um, like the, the uh, what's it called? MWR? No, the PMO. And you What does that stand for? The, 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 it's the police station. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, whatever. MP station? Yeah. Yep. And you register your weapons, and you get an access permit, and then you can basically, when you want to go hunt, you call range control, say, hey, I'm going into this unit and they break it down like i have a map for fort bliss it's all broken down into sections like game management units you call them you say hey i'm going into this area and they look and make sure there's no units training in that area and then they say okay you're good and you go out there and hunt and then you call them and say hey i'm leaving and they sign you off that way they know you're gone um so like fort drum is all it's just like you know public land basically besides the i gotta call range control but here it's all draw permits. So you got to go to Rod Gun Club, and it's just like any other state with a draw permit. You purchase your hunting license, you pay the fee for the draw that's non refundable, and, it, and then if you get the drawn for the tag, then you got to pay for the tag. Like you can hunt orcs here, it's like $1,000 if you get the tag. As a non resident? Well, it doesn't matter. It's oh, okay. It's military or not, it's still 1000 bucks. Okay. And then. Uh, Mule deer is a draw, Halloween is a draw, uh, Barbary sheep on post is a draw, like er, all big game on post is a draw, which is kind of was a letdown for me because um, I didn't get to hunt mule deer here like I was excited to. But we did find out, and so not to cut you off, but also research 
how close you are to state lines. If, if you're able to, like, if you're stationed here at Fort Bliss, mm -hmm. well, New Mexico is a great fucking hunting state. So you can take advantage of that by maybe living just over the New Mexico line and becoming a New Mexico resident. And, and then all of a sudden you've got the advantages that New Mexico offers for military and veterans so, to get your tags and all that kind of well, stuff not too. Well, to cut you off, but if you're stationed here at Fort Bliss, right, you can contact the New Mexico Fish and Game Office Send them a copy of your order mm -hmm. state that shows you're stationed here, and then you get resident rates. Yeah. So it's not free like it is here in Texas, but you get resident rates, which is a lot cheaper. Um, right. So that's that's the other thing too. I mean, you can just do your research. Um, you know, if you're really serious about hunting in a certain area, like Alaska provides. Um, I, when I looked at it the last time, if you're military station there or a veteran i can't remember if you're if you're a veteran from there or not um just make sure you check the regs on that but they give you i think it's like a ten dollar bear tag like grizzly or a brown bear tag right. um you know and like a bunch of different things mm -hmm. so like texas they give you free tags like even even as a veteran just from any other state if you're a military veteran from any other state like i got all of my tags absolutely free for coming here um you know there's there's other states that provide that kind of thing for um idaho if you're a disabled veteran over a certain percentage um you get resident rate well pretty close to resident rate like really close to resident rate um on most animals there um you know, and, and there's a bunch of other states like that. So if you just do your research in, in a lot of those states, you've got ample opportunities uh, to, to do that kind of thing. Yeah. The, the, the one nice thing about Texas is they're very, very youth hunting oriented. Like uh, my son, who's nine. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we took him out hunting with us. Well, we went and got him a hunt license, you know, we did everything, and he got his first duck this year, like, he killed some rabbits with it. Two ducks, wasn't it? Uh, well, he got a bunch of ducks. Yeah. But, uh, and we had, we had a blast. I mean, we, we crushed it duck hunting. Like, I got here, and it was, it's hard to find people that are as into hunting as me. And I got this guy, I never knew this guy never hunted. We went out shooting guns yeah. one day. We were hanging out, and I was like, hey, you want to go hunt some rabbits? And he was like, hell yeah. Yeah. So we went out, and we were walking through the desert, and he blasted this tiny little bunny. It was a cottontail. It was a cottontail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, cottontail, I think, tastes better than jackrabbit. No. Just, just saying. I know. I know. <laughs> um, jackrabbit's like steak, man. It's fantastic if you cook it right. It's a darker meat. It's great. But anyway, so he blasted this cottontail, and uh, I mean, we missed a few rabbits, and they were a little sparse that day. We were headed back to the car. He was all excited. He's like, man, this is my first rabbit. And I was like, really? He's like, this is my first kill ever. I'm like, you've never hunted? Like, I, I just come from Alaska and all his hunting, or all his guns and stuff we got shooting. I would have thought he hunted before. I know this guy did. He's not very good at it. He <laughs> a lot. But, oh, uh, you got retaliation? I just don't quit. quit at the end of the season. Oh, okay. oh man, I going back know. to adult season. I went through five boxes, only got three birds. <laughs> but, uh, Wait, was it only five? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but we, like, we, 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 we crushed the ducks this year, but after that i i made it a point to to really get him into hunting like i enjoy sharing the knowledge and getting people into hunting the right way because there's so many people out oh, there absolutely. they go out and they're like oh i'm gonna buy a gun i'm gonna buy some camo and i'm gonna go out in the woods and shoot everything that moves and yeah. people go out and deer hunt and they don't know how to properly hunt so they sit there and a deer runs by and they take a shot and it doesn't fall and they're like, well, I guess I missed. But little do they know, 100 yards away, it's laying there dead. 
Yeah. And that happens so often, and it pisses me off that there's people out there that don't know how to hunt properly, and they they just neglect and kill so many animals. They litter, and that's like yeah, they my number one pet peeve. Well, yeah, and I I told you when we were out on our walkabout that. Uh, so when I was over by um, where we were gonna hunt originally in here in Texas, I actually did a video and shameless plug, go to my YouTube video uh, for Archery Outdoorsman. But I did a video about how we need to take care of our public lands because I mean, there was shit everywhere. Like, shotgun shells fucking burn tires I mean just everything that you possibly could imagine was just strewed all over the landscape and if we don't take care of that shit it's gonna get fucking taken away from us Yeah. and I mean it, it's gonna take I mean you guys are in the military so you know one person fucks up and everybody suffers for it yeah Absolutely. So we have to take care of that kind of stuff. And to your point, the ethics that need to be taught as, as just an outdoorsman in general, I think is missing in in a lot of it. So yeah, yeah absolutely, 100%. It's, it's good that you're showing him the ethics and the morals and all that kind of thing that, that should go along with it not just the kill like fuck we walked i don't know how many miles but it's not just about the kill i mean we saw shit ton of animals yeah. great views some of it fucking sucked but some of it or most of it i would say most of it was just awesome it was just awesome to be out there yeah and and that's so I was raised into hunting, and my dad's a huge hunter, and like all that credit goes to my dad for for bringing me up. Like he brought me into it when I was real little. He'd take me out with him, and obviously I couldn't hunt. I'd just sit there, and, and I developed a love for the outdoors and hunting. And I've done the same thing with my son and my daughter. She just doesn't like to kill things. Um, she likes to eat it though. Yeah, she'll, she'll eat <laughs> well, it. She doesn't know where it is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she'll eat it, and she'll go out and shoot guns with me, and she, you know, she likes to be outside. She's just not a big fan of killing things, which is fine. And she's accompanied me on several hunting trips. My son absolutely loves everything outdoors: hunting, fishing, hiking, all that, and it's awesome. And uh, like I got him his first real bow, and he loves shooting it, and. Um, He's gone out and he's killed several animals now. And he, he has a blast. He comes out with us all the time. Yeah, uh, even when he can't hunt, he likes to come out and sit with me. In the, back when we were in PA, he'd sit in the tree stand and in the blind and stuff like that. And uh, it's not – you could pull him in here and ask him, right? And, and I'm trying to raise him as it's not about whether or not you go home with an animal. It's about – the memories you go home with you know yeah. i love the outdoors and these guys will tell you they hated me during duck season because we got there like three hours before the sun even broke yeah that was what back in december too yeah. it was cold so yeah. that's like i'm big on i get out i like to get out way before the sun comes up get set up so i can enjoy the view enjoy the sunrise you know, listening to the animals start to perk up and stuff like that. It's a lot. I I enjoy that shit. And then, you know, obviously when you kill stuff, it makes it more memorable. But especially when I have my son with me, I mean, the one day I don't even think I really hunted. I had the shotgun with me, and I was just letting him shoot shoot at him, and he had a blast. And I don't think he'll ever forget that. No. What about you guys? I mean. You said you were crabbing and all that kind of stuff. What kind of outdoors background did you have, or did you 
not really have that much of an outdoor background. Oh, no, I did. Um, <laughs> my dad, he was he was big into hunting, trapping. Uh, he got me bigger into trapping um, the older I got. Um, he he showed me the, the basics of how to do everything um, when it came to hunting deer and stuff like that. But when it came to trapping, he used to trap muskrat and loved it. I love love trapping muskrat and he just he'd give me a few 110 kind of bear and he'd be like all give right you a what a, a 110 kind of bear it's, it's a little trap a little body gripping trap breaks the, oh, oh the okay gotcha gotcha yeah gotcha. yeah I, I never knew what they were called i just yeah and uh i'd go out and walk the marsh and uh set up traps here and there, just put my flag up, remember where they were, come back the next day and I'd have one in this one, miss that one, one in the next. And I just went and what I love, I love trapping. That's, that's my favorite thing. But, uh, very good at it though. yeah, well, I messed up. You ever, <laughs> you ever study? You gotta learn. Hey, I mean, yeah, that's part you of it. Learn. Learn. Do you ever study like any of the old trappers and like oh, yeah. their methods and stuff like that? Yeah, I have a uh, a book in my room. It's called the I think it's the Trapper's Bible, and it has all these different. It it shows you how to trap a lion and stuff like that. I mean, it's got a whole bunch of different ways of how you can do it. Um, how people used to do it before they were the metal spring traps. It was just snares and just hooking two pieces of wood together with a snare around it and stuff like that, trapping them. Those guys were hard motherfuckers. It's like amazing. if you it's seriously, amazing. like if you if you ever want to read like or uh, maybe you don't read or whatever, but if you ever want to hear about like some crazy fucking stories, I can't remember who the trapper was. Um famous trapper for some reason is just escaping me, but he was chased by indians they killed his partner and like gutted him in front of him and he ran naked crawled into a uh, crawled into a beaver den and curled up in the beaver den until they left and then made his way out of the out of the woods and out of the frontier back to a fort somewhere like completely naked. I mean, talk about a hard mofo right there. Yeah. I mean, that's just like those guys were. Oh yeah. Those guys were tough, and like some of the things that they had to do, um, like just to even survive, you know, because they live on wild game. You can't just live on wild game. You have to have fats and stuff like that. I mean, just the things that they would have to do, and like they'd eat. Uh, they'd eat the gall and stuff like that from animals. Like they'd take the bile from the gallbladder and they would squeeze it in their mouth. I mean, things that sound like completely just wrong. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, very like a word. Yeah, yeah, and like some of that stuff is just—it's completely lost. But I mean, there's a. There's a special place for, you know, trappers and stuff like that. That mm-hmm. I've never been a big trapper. My dad did, my, <laughs> is that because you don't want to drink the bile? No, no, no. <laughs> my, dad, my dad never really was a trapper. Like we 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 hunted, you know, but we never really trapped. And uh, I don't know, like two years ago or so, Jay, I don't know how he got interested in it, but he he kind of got interested in learning how to, he wanted to learn how to trap. So. It was kind of neat. It was like a learning experience for me and him. So I went and got my trapper's license, and I was like, "All right, well, we're gonna we're gonna learn together." So we went out to the woods, set some traps. We checked them every day. Like three weeks went by, and we had nothing. So I started doing more research and more research, and like, what am I doing wrong and stuff like that. It was getting down to like the last day of the season for raccoons, and that's what we were trying to trap. And uh, Jay had set up a trap on his own and wasn't very well camouflaged like it wasn't scent free you know we threw a chunk of sardine in there and it was down by this little river bottom or a creek bottom and I was like yeah, I'm probably not going to get nothing in that and 
sure we weren't even trying to track coons in that one. I think it was a really tiny one, and we were trying to catch uh, like little uh, like weasels. And sure as shit, we walked down the hill, and there's a, a raccoon in that trap, and he didn't get caught in the trap. You know, his hand wasn't stuck, and he was just so big that when he crawled in, he couldn't get out. So the door was still open. He was just wedged in there all the way in the front. And uh, I thought that was kind of neat. So, you know, I let Jay, um, you know, put him out. And uh, that was pretty cool, you know, that we actually got something, even though neither one of us knew what the hell we were doing at all. You know, but it, it's fun to have those experiences, especially when you have kids, you know, because then it's, not just a learning experience, but it's more memorable mm -hmm. uh, for the both of you. Yeah. You know, like I know uh, there's a lot of things from when I was younger mm -hmm. that from hunting with my dad that I'll never forget. Just fun experiences, even when we didn't get anything. My first two years of hunting, I missed every single deer I shot at. First two years. Every single one with a gun and a bow. Seems reminiscent for waterfowl. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So like no, but for real, like my first two years hunting, I had so many deer within twenty yards, easy, ten, fifteen. And I would just get so excited because I was young and that I would just all the basics would fly away and I'd just pull back my bow and you know, I'd hit a twig or I'd shoot under it, or I'd shoot over it, or I'd get excited, I wouldn't even aim. You know, and, and then finally, uh, it was like middle archery season, my third year hunting, and uh, I had missed a, a seven point. Uh, we were sitting in a tree stand, and he came around the backside, and I was in a weird position, and I shot, and I shot right underneath his belly, yeah. and I felt so <laughs> defeated that I, and that was the first year I had got the opportunity to take a shot at that year. And I felt so defeated, and I was like, oh, man, this year's going to be like the past two, and I suck at hunting, and, you know, all this. And we were walking out. We were leaving because I, I was just ready to be done. And uh, Kind of like with duck season. Huh? Yeah. So, <laughs> so we're walking out. So you're saying this goes back. Yeah. To it's like... starting to seem like a trend, isn't it? <laughs> so we're walking out, and, uh, I mean, this is a memory I'll never forget. We're walking down the trail, and it's woods and then a cornfield, and the woods kind of cuts back like this to a hayfield. And as we're walking out, this A point, which is on the wall now, uh, steps out, and uh, he was just standing in the middle of the field. And I knocked an arrow, and I low crawled to within range. I was about 40 yards away, and I took a shot at him from the knee. And I'll, I'll never forget that because I hit him. You shot him in the knee? No, I took a shot from the knee. <laughs> I, 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 I took a knee, I drew back. I, uh, I literally, I aimed, and then I closed my eyes, and I was like, please, hit this motherfucker. And I, I let the arrow fly, and I heard it hit him. Like, I heard the smack, and he went, like, 10 yards and stopped and looked at us. And my dad's like, you missed. And I looked, and it, and it ran into the woods. I was like, there, I was arguing with him. I was like, there's no way I missed. I heard it hit him, and then we heard the crash. And my dad looks at me and goes, well, I guess you did hit him. <laughs> so we walked down there, and that fucker fell down a ravine like 200 feet. And my dad's like, well, you shot him. Now you got to drag him out. I'm like 14, 15 years old dragging this monster deer up a ravine, and then it was like 300 more yards to the truck. It was miserable, but it was, I, I mean, I'll never forget it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was awesome. Well, you guys, I've got a... Unfortunately, I've got a plane that I've got to catch, but you guys have anything else you want to add, like anything at all? I got nothing. It's my first time doing this, so yeah. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how it works. I'm, I'm pretty much set. I mean, even though you get discouraged sometimes when you go out hunting, like he said, you got to try and try again. Yeah. It's going to be a pain in the ass sometimes, but you just got to get back up on your feet and yeah. just keep going at it. Yep. It's something that you love doing. You just got to keep following it. Whatever you do, if you're in the military and you get stationed in Alaska and you go hunting. Don't do what this guy did. Don't do what I did and wait till I got to Fort Bliss, yeah. Texas to start you, hunting. You probably will have to do some sort of a hunter safety yeah. if you haven't done it already. And then 
Yeah, just research the licensing requirements and all that kind of stuff and mm -hmm. talk to the MWR or yeah. look up the BOSS program. I had no idea about the BOSS program. Yeah. But anyway, I want to thank you guys for being on here. I want to thank you guys for doing what you're doing, putting your life on hold and all that kind of stuff. Seriously, I mean, I, I know what it's like. I wasn't in for nearly as long as some of you guys have been, but... I really do appreciate it. And what I'm going to do, I already gave Stoker and Mike a hat and a shirt. And I'm going to give each one of you a copy of my book, 10 Rules for Finding a Good Hunting Partner. And I'm going to give you guys some Teogarize coffee and some Next Mile meals. Maybe take in the field with you. Absolutely. And, uh, Be better than MREs. <laughs> you know, much better than MREs, I promise. The, oh, yeah. the coffee is way better than what you guys are going to have. Yeah, that's for sure. Too. So, um, uh, again, I want to thank you guys. And uh, I really appreciate you guys having me down here. Uh, yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah. Come yeah. visit us in New York, all three oh, of us. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. All, all three of you? Wait, I thought he was left out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll uh, definitely make sure we don't pull another pot like this one. Oh, no, it'll yeah. be... Well, it, even, even though it didn't turn out the way we had envisioned it it was still a it was still a great great experience and still learned a shit ton yeah i mean the hiking alone from the pictures i'd seen oh yeah it looked amazing it doesn't do justice beautiful yeah yeah but anyway thank you guys i really appreciate it if you like this content uh like and subscribe um if you're watching this on youtube hit the bell notification subscribe and if you're uh, seeing this on a podcast channel, make sure you subscribe to my to my channel. You can find us all uh, at TSD Outdoors, yep. uh, Berserker Outdoors. How do you how do you spell that? Honestly, I'd have to check my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll provide a link in the YouTube video for this. Uh, uh, Caroline County Outdoors. Caroline County Outdoors. All right, and uh, of course, I'm Archery Outdoorsman. And uh, I really appreciate you guys being on here. I really appreciate my guests. Thanks for having us. Thank you.